Hello and welcome to San Benito Art Council's art tutorial. My name is Allison Barnes. I am a teaching artist with the San Benito Arts Council. Today I will be teaching you how to draw a dream catcher. The supplies you will need is either a white piece of paper or a black piece of paper. You are also going to be using colored pencils. If you do not have colored pencils, please use color crayons. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first step to our drawing is to create the crescent moon shape of our dream catcher. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to stay close to the upper half of my picture to start drawing in the crescent moon. I want to make sure that I have enough room to include the feathers. So I am going to use some guide dots. My first guide dot I'm going to place right about there. So I still have room at the top of my paper to add some background details later. And then I'm going to go maybe about halfway down the page. Okay, the next step is to create the crescent moon. So I see the crescent moon shape as just being a simple shape, the letter C. So I'm going to draw the letter C by connecting the top guide dot to the bottom guide dot. So the next step that we have to do is to create our second line that's going to create the crescent moon. So again, it's going to be the letter C, but it's not going to be as large as our first one, meaning the arch isn't going to be as big. And I'm going to keep it closer to the two dots that I have, but I'm still starting at the top dot. I'm going around and connecting down. So now you can see that we have the crescent moon shape. My final step to complete this crescent moon shape is we want to have the look of the willow branch that creates the actual dream catcher. So I'm going to draw one final C shape that's going to follow along that first line I drew. Okay, so I'm starting at the top of the dot that I have and I'm going around and I'm going back down. And you can make this as wide as you want. So now I've decided my dream catcher, the moon shape, I'm going to use a turquoise blue. So I'm actually gonna go back and outline the outside and color it in. You can do this step now, so you don't get confused later on. What part of your dream catcher moon is the reed? And what part of your crescent moon dream catcher is going to become the beautiful webbing inside? All right, we are going to come back to our um, crescent moon shape and add more detail later on. Okay, now our next step is to include where we are going to have the beautiful feathers that hang down from our dream catcher. So I'm only going to create three feathers. This is going to be your choice, and if you would like to add more, you may do so. So I'm going to start on the left side of my moon, of my dream catcher, the moon shape that I have, 
and I'm going to draw a straight line down. Okay, so this line, it's not too long. My second line, I'm going to, to decide, do I want this feather to hang a little bit longer or further down on my paper or a little bit shorter? And I believe in this case, since I have a lot of room towards the bottom of my page, I'm going to draw this one a little bit longer in the center. And then my final fe feather, I'm going to start at the end of the moon catcher, and this one's going to be a little bit shorter. So those are my three lines. Okay, so my first feather shape. On my left feather, I'm going to draw a curvy line. I'm going to curve it first to the right, then down to the left, like so. I'm also going to create a second line that follows that. That's going to be the center of the feather. So that's my first feather shape. My second feather shape, I'm just actually going to curve it to the right and back to the left. Just so I have different shaped feathers and I'm going to include that second line. And then my last feather, I'm going to start and draw the line down first and then curve it to the right. Okay. Please feel free to create your own shape for your feathers. Now I'm going to actually show you how to draw each individual feather. So going back to the first feather on my left, I'm going to start back up at the top and I'm going to draw curve line down and then I'm going to bring it in kind of close to the center. Go back down, draw a line in, and then end it past. And I do go past the center line. I'm going to do the same thing onto the right side. Draw a line down, bring it in, down, in, around to meet to the bottom of the feather. Okay. And then later on, we're going to go back and color in our feather. Now towards the top, the feather has some cute little wispies. That's what I call them. Okay. A little bit of fluff on the end of that feather that we want to include. Okay, so my second feather, this one that's in the center, I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to add some little jagged lines towards the bottom. Same thing, start around on the right side and go around and close it off at the bottom. I want each of my feathers to look a little bit different. You don't have to do that. They can all look the same. Okay, on the top, I'm going to add those little cute wispies to the top. And then my final feather, again, I start at the top, around and down. I'm just going to make as many little lines going down and around on the left side and repeat on the right. And if you notice, I'm still using my white colored pencil because we are using black paper as the background in this case. It's just easier to, to have your sketch and use a nice white colored pencil. And then later on, you can go back and add your color to it. So there we have just our basic beginning shape of our dream catcher. We have the top part, which is our crescent moon. We have our feathers hanging down. Our final step is going to be add, is to add the webbing into the center of our crescent moon. Okay, our next step is to add the beautiful webbing inside the dream catcher. Now this part may look a little bit scary, 
I am going to hopefully show you step by step an easy way to create the webbing shapes. So we are going to start on the right side of the crescent moon. Now, go, I'm going to add some guide dots to help me place the webbing on the inside of the crescent moon. So I'm going to start and I'm going to add six dots along the right side of the crescent moon. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And you don't have to space them out evenly. As you can see, I just went ahead and put them along the line that I have for the crescent moon. If you prefer to use a ruler to get those areas perfectly spaced out, you may do so. Now on the left side of the crescent moon, I'm going to switch the color that I'm using so you can see this. I'm actually going to go in between the two dots that I have on the right. So I just kind of guide my pencil all the way up to the top. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to place a second set of dots. Okay. Taking a little more time just to make sure I'm, I'm centering them. So I had one, two, three, four, and this time there's gonna be five and I'm gonna add one more here. Okay, so once I have those dots placed, I'm going to start drawing my set, my webbing. I'm going to start on the right side and we are going to draw what I call like little rainbow shapes. Okay, so this shape, I'm going to go from the first dot on the right side to the first dot on the left side. And I'm just drawing an arch or a rainbow shape. I'm going to go through to the second dot and do the same thing. A nice arch from dot to dot. And you're gonna continue on with each dot to make an arch. I'm trying to make sure my colored pencil is nice and sharp so my lines aren't too thick. And then my last arch. So that is the first step. Now the second step, I'm again going to choose a different color. So hopefully you can see the second set of lines that I draw. Okay, so I'm going to start at the second dot. And instead of my arches going up and over, they're gonna go the opposite direction. So I'm going to draw them down and over. So this first dot, so we're skipping the first dot, moving to the second dot. So I'm going up, crossing over the first arch line and stopping up at the top of the left of the crescent moon. I'm going to show you that again with going down to the next dot. So I go up, I cross through the arch, and then I end at the left part of the crescent moon. And I was actually touching that first initial dot on the right, on the left side. Okay. So I know it could be a little confusing, so I start at the next dot. I go up, I cross through, so this was the third arch. I cross through the er third arch, and then I stop at that dot. Up, cross through. This last one, up, cross through. And if you want to add one more towards the edge, I go up and doesn't have much of an arch there. Okay, and then I have two more steps to complete the webbing. So I'm going to draw a curved line from the top of the crescent moon to the bottom. So I'll start at the dot. This first line is going to stay somewhat close to this right side, this right crescent moon shape. 
Start at the top, arch it out, and back down. And then I'm gonna add one more. Okay, and this second one will be closer to the left of the crescent moon shape. Now, I chose two different colors to showcase how I created the webbing. You may choose just one color. You can choose white. You can choose any color blue. Again, I was just trying to show you how I drew the webbing or to create that look of the dream catcher webbing. Now we can start adding color to our dream catcher. So I'm going to show you how to color in the feathers. What I do is I pick two colors that I know are going to blend well together. Here are some colors that might work for you. Red and orange. You can blend those two colors together. Orange and yellow. Yellow and green. Green and blue blue and purple, or purple and red. For my feathers, I really love the color of this turquoise color, so I'm going to blend greens and blues together. All right, so we're going to start with the left feather. I'm going to begin by coloring and, and using green. I'm going to start first with a light green color and on this black paper it's going to be very vibrant. So I'm coloring in all the areas on the left side of the feather and you can go ahead and outline the white pencil mark and color it. So I colored in the first, the top half the middle, and then I colored in the bottom, not all the way with my light green. Now I'm going to take my dark green colored pencil. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna blend the two colors. I'm gonna start at the bottom, and then I'm gonna work my way up into the light green color. I'm not gonna color in the center part. We're going to leave that blank. And if you wanna see how the colors blend even more, you can just add a little bit more of the light green over that dark green. Okay, you're gonna color in the right side of that feather as well. You're gonna to wanna to take your time, make sure you're coloring in so you don't see any of that paper behind the black colored uh, paper that we're using. And the way I do that is I do add quite a bit of pressure when I'm coloring my and using these colored pencils. Just like so. Now the little fuzzies that I have on top, I'm just going to go over that with my green, the light green. Now the center feather, I'm going to use my light green and then my turquoise blue. I'm gonna start at the top with green. Color about halfway down. Then I'm going to take my turquoise blue. Again, you can start at the bottom of the feather if you'd like. And I'm gonna blend it into the light green. And I am using quite a bit of pressure to make sure I have enough color on my paper. Okay, and then you can add more green if you wanna mix the colors and a little more blue of that turquoise blue. Repeat the same thing on the right side. And then I'm trying to make it look fluffy on the out, around the edges. And then blue. Okay. 
my final feather, I'm going to color it again with the turquoise blue and the green, but this time I'm going to start with the turquoise blue on the top. Follow along. Staying out of the center, I'm leaving that area blank. And then I'll finish the bottom half with my green, my very light, bright green. And I just blend the two colors together. Again, this method works with any two colors that you choose. If I was coloring in with red and orange, you can do the same thing. Red and orange colors mix really well together. Yellow and green, green and blue, blue and purple, purple and red. So have fun trying different colors that mix together. Okay. Don't forget the little wispies. I'm gonna go back, color in those some blue at the top of this one here, and then some of this green. Okay, now the inside of my crescent moon. I'm gonna go ahead and finish coloring that in because I don't want the black paper showing through. The next step is I'm going to add a few beads to um, the strings that are holding the feathers. So I'm going to use a dark blue and I'm going to add a circle bead. Hopefully you can see that. Then I'm going to take pink and I'm going to add a heart shape and color that in. And then I have room for one more bead. So I'm just creating a circle just by coloring in round and round circle motion. Okay, now my center, I, have, I think I believe I have enough room for probably a round bead and a heart shape. And I do have room for one more. Now you can decide what color and shape beads that you would like to have on your dream catcher. On this last one, I'm just going to add a heart shape. Now because this is a crescent moon, I'm actually gonna add a star hanging from the top. Okay, so I draw a straight line down. I'm going to take yellow. Okay, the color that I'm using is called sand. And I'm gonna think back to when maybe I was in third grade or fourth grade and I start drawing the shape of my star. Looks like I'm going to draw the letter A and then I go across to the left straight across to the right, and then connect back down to the left. Then I just color it all in. And you're going to not see any of those extra lines I drew. That's how I would draw in my star shape. Okay, now from here, you can add more details. In my final picture, let's go back to this. I added some clouds some extra stars, some cute little raindrops, just because I love the whimsical look of that. And then I added in the word sweet dreams. This is your dream catcher. You can add any background that you would like to yours. Okay. I will show you an example of how I drew in my cloud. I just drew a straight line down across from left to right, and then I just added some little puffs to make it look like a cloud. 
Then I colored it in all white. Okay, and this will take a little bit of time. You want to make sure it's nice and solid when you color it in because you don't want to see the paper showing through. So you're going to want to make sure you color it on all in. And then if you'd like to take, say, maybe your turquoise or a light blue color, you can add a little bit of color or even pink to the edges. I'm sticking to the left side of each of those little puffy clouds. Okay, just like so. And then I go over it one more time with my white colored pencil just to blend it in. That just gives a little more dimension to your cloud. You, don't, you do not have to do that step. Okay, again, you would take your time to color in to make sure the black paper is not showing through. You can add as many clouds as you want. And then the, my final step is I added a few more stars. If your stars, if you just want to add little dots all over, you can do that. Add some little lines across to make them look like they're sparkling. That's fun. Or you can actually draw in more stars. Okay. And then for the raindrops, I went back and I used the white colored pencil. And I just drew what I thought looked like raindrops. Colored it in. And I added just a dark blue to the left side, like so. And then blended it with my white colored pencil, just like so. Thank you everyone for joining me and drawing this fun art project. I hope you all enjoyed creating your very own dream catcher. Thank you and stay tuned for more art lessons with the San Benito Art Council.